Welcome back in, everybody. We're joined now by the great Miranda Devine. Not only do we think uh, she is great, President Trump does too. He put out this on Truth Social. The great Miranda Devine understood the harsh reality of the laptop from hell before the fake news media would even acknowledge its, its existence. Now Miranda has written another blockbuster book, The Big Guy, How a President and His Son Sold Out America. The Big Guy hits stores and bottom line today. Miranda, congrats again on the book and the shout out from the other big guy, President Trump. How are you doing? Thanks, Buck and Clay. I'm doing really well and um, very happy and thrilled that um, Donald Trump has actually endorsed the book. That's terrific. How much of this is it is, is, feels like it's kind of a sequel to Laptop from Hell or, or you know, the, the next, uh, you know, the next phase of the story? And and what's what's really the focus? I mean, I, it feels like just from the title alone, you want America to know this really wasn't about a guy taking selfies and tidy whities with aviators on, meaning Hunter. There's bigger issues here. Yeah, 100 percent. It is a sequel and it really is about the cover up. Um, you know, the laptop from hell and all our reporting we did that got censored uh, from Hunter Biden's abandoned laptop tells the story of the sort of Biden family influence peddling. But um, you know, that's a big story and corruption is as old as Washington itself. And uh, it showed us that Joe Biden, the president, was potentially compromised by China because of the millions of dollars his family had brought in. But I think the biggest story and the story that sort of evolved only after uh, we started reporting out the truth from the laptop was the cover up, um, which began uh, the minute the New York Post uh, published on October 14, 2020, and we had uh, Big tech, Facebook and Twitter, censor the story immediately, lock our account uh, for two weeks until a couple of days before the election. And then you had uh, these former intelligence officials, 51, I call them the dirty 51, who signed that letter falsely claiming that the laptop and our stories were Russian disinformation. Um, what we found out in the four years since is just mind boggling the uh, concerted effort by it wasn't just former intelligence officials it was the cia the cia director herself gina haspel at the time under donald trump she signed off on that letter she was shown the letter before it was issued to the public and she okayed it she gave it the green light um, and uh, we also found out that several of the signatories of that letter were actually active contractors for the CIA at the time. Uh, and then we also later find out other interventions by the CIA, including into um, the investigation of Hunter Biden in Delaware that dragged on for five years because the Department of Justice was obstructing and uh, hobbling the investigators uh, any time they tried to um, find out or follow any of the evidence trails from Hunter Biden to his father, who was intimately involved in this corruption, uh, they were blocked. They were told, no, you can't have a search warrant on Joe Biden's property. No, you can't geolocate the phones that were on Joe Biden's property that Hunter Biden was telling his Chinese business partners that he was sitting in a room with his father and his father was angry that the money hadn't come through. Uh, they weren't allowed to interview Kevin Morris, who, um, you know, Hunter's business partners call Hunter Biden's uh, latest sugar brother, the Hollywood lawyer who um, ba basically bankrolled his lifestyle and, and also paid uh, up to six million dollars for him, uh, including for his IRS overdue IRS taxes. Um, and uh, Kevin Morris, uh, the CIA, uh, apparently called in the um, DOJ, the prosecutors, and told them that he was off limits for their investigation. And the IRS investigators who became whistleblowers were never told uh, why they weren't allowed to interview Kevin Morris, but uh, eventually the prosecutors they worked with said, well, we got called to Langley and uh, they said, leave off. Um, there were so many instances, and it was not just the CIA, the FBI, the State Department, as I said, the Department of Justice, the IRS, they all conspired to cover up the corruption and ensure at the 2020 election that Joe Biden would win and that none of the derogatory information that we'd uncovered would see the light of day. Miranda, 
you brought this story out in October of 2020. We know it was 100% true, yet it was censored, as you've laid out. This new book discusses that. How concerned are you about a 2024 version of what happened in 2020? And if it were to occur, what do you think it might look like? Uh, as certainly that rigging may well have given Joe Biden the election in 20. What are you concerned about as you look six weeks out here from this election? Well, uh, that is top of mind. And I think that's why I wrote the book, because the same people who covered up and protected Joe Biden really throughout his career from his earliest days in the Senate at the age of 29, 30, um, they are now propping up Kamala Harris. And it's no seek, no, no surprise that uh, in her um, sort of endorsement speech at the DNC um, in Chicago a few weeks ago that she made a point of talking about the military uh, and the military industrial complex, basically her support for them. It's no surprise that yesterday you had Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, uh, intervene in our election just as early voting was starting in Pennsylvania. He flies into Pennsylvania to go and stand alongside uh, Kamala Harris surrogates and sign bombs uh, in a factory there. Um, and he was flown in by US military aircraft. Um, this is the most outrageous uh, intervention uh, by, uh, I guess you call it the national security state or the blob, uh, as the Obama people used to call that sort of uh, triumvirate of the State Department, the CIA um, and the Pentagon. Uh, they. Uh, I mean, even this week, there were 741 members of these high ranking officials of the national security state who signed a letter endorsing Kamala Harris, if you can believe it, as a serious and capable commander in chief, far superior to Donald Trump. And I think really the agenda is this, that Donald Trump as president presided over a period of uh, remarkable calm and peace around the world. Uh, on foreign affairs, he treated everything the way he treated a domestic policy, uh, just like a, a, like a developer from a property developer from Queens. He was practical, uh, first principles, logical. Uh, just tried to fix problems the safest and quickest and cheapest way possible and most effectively. And he did that. And we saw in the Middle East, uh, the Abraham Accords, um, we saw that Vladimir Putin, uh, unlike under Obama and under Biden, he did not invade uh, Ukraine. Uh, we saw ISIS defeated. We saw Iran uh, on its knees, completely broke and unable to fund any of its proxies to attack Israel. Um, you know, several of its uh, high ranking people were wiped out by Donald Trump. Um, North Korea was in its box. Uh, you know, you would think for the American people, for America's national interest, all of that would be beneficial. And yet, no, because these national security apparatchiks who are completely out of control, um, they are a shadow government and their puppet was Donald was was sorry, was uh, Joe Biden. Their new puppet is Kamala Harris. And of course, her sidekick, Tim Waltz, who plays the same role that uh, Joe Biden did for Obama as being the sort of foreign policy guy who's completely captured by China. Miranda Devine with us, The Big Guy, How a President and His Son Sold Out America, her book that is out today, a sequel to her best-selling Laptop from Hell. Go get your copy. Uh, Miranda, I know you wrote a, uh, a piece in the New York Post. Uh, we didn't spend much time on this on the show. Uh, I kind of wish we had dove into it a little more, so this is our first opportunity. Biden had a cabinet meeting on Friday <laughs> but Jill Biden was running the cabinet meeting, which I think it's fair to ask, considering Biden clearly has cognitive decline from age. Is Jill Biden the de facto president now? Because I don't think we signed up for Dr. Jill to run things. Yeah, well, she certainly thinks that she's pretty important. There she was uh, on Friday as you said, presiding over a cabinet meeting, sitting at the head of the table, uh, expounding on some pet 
ridiculous project of hers. Uh, and then, you know, around the table, cabinet members, including sitting right next to her, the CIA director, William Burns, had to dutifully applaud her while Joe Biden's just staring vacantly into space. Um, I mean, if anything, he's gone downhill since his disastrous debate, whatever they were doing to prop him up and make him seem uh, relatively rational, they seem to have given up doing. Uh, we hardly ever see him. He had to come out of his box, of course, um, over the weekend because he had the uh, prime ministers from India and Japan and Australia arrive for that really important quad meeting, which is about uh, sort of stemming China's aggression in the Indo-Pacific. Um, and uh, instead, of having them at the White House as they were last time, as, as they should be, they were insulted by being having to schlep all the way out to Wilmington, to Joe Biden's hometown, um, stay in subpar lodgings, while uh, Jill Biden took over the White House for her own pet projects. And she had, for instance, the cast of the West Wing there for a party, and she had some educators uh, confab on another day. So there was just no room for the leaders of two billion people to talk about how to stop China from uh, taking over half the half the world. Miranda, what do you think would happen if China invaded Taiwan? But who would actually make decisions in the White House right now? Look, I think it's really frightening to think who is making the decisions. Obviously, Joe Biden is in no state to answer the phone at three o'clock in the morning. He's in no state to control the nuclear arsenal. Uh, it's it's shadowy people. It's Tony Blinken. It's Jake Sullivan. Uh, it's whoever at the Pentagon. Um, it's this shadow cabal, this shadow government that's controlling things that will do whatever it takes to ensure that Donald Trump is not president again. Uh, and, and I mean, whatever it takes, you know, they they are desperate um, and they uh, they think that Donald Trump is an existential threat, not to America, not to democracy, but to their own power, their own control of things. So um, I, I honestly cannot tell you, I don't think anyone can really tell you what's going on behind the scenes. Some people say that Obama is pulling the strings from around the corner. Um, that could be the case. So he has a lot of his his people um, stashed there at the White House running a lot, and the DOJ running things. What do you think, Miranda, last question for you, and we appreciate and encourage everybody to go get the new book that is out that is rocketing up bestseller uh, list. What do you think, or how long, maybe is a better way to phrase it, how long do you think it will be until we get the, f the true story of Joe Biden behind the scenes and how decrepit and frail he has really been? Do you think before he leaves, a couple of months after the inauguration of whoever wins, what does that look like for the historical record? Well, I think that all the journalists in Washington who knew exactly what was going on will be in a huge arms race to see who can get, uh, you know, the book out first and get the biggest advance. So they won't be, they'll be writing it right now and they'll push the button after the election because, of course, they won't want to damage Kamala Harris's prospects because right. she's uh, knew m m better than anyone except probably Jill Biden and Hunter Biden what Joe Biden's cognitive state was like. Uh, they were supposed to be having lunch every week that sort of petered off to um, just semi-regularly. But she was also boasted about being the last person in the room when decisions were made. She knew exactly what was wrong with him, and yet she lied through her teeth to the American people, telling us that he was sharp as a tack and, you know, brilliant and ready to, you know, run another term and no problem at all. Um, I guess she was hoping that he would stumble across the finish line, win the election, so that she could just be anointed without having to go through the discomfort of an election. But she's hardly uh, really putting herself out. I wouldn't call what she's doing campaigning. Go get the book, The Big Guy, How a President and His Son Sold Out America. Um, Miranda, you were, we're big fans over here. Thanks for all the work you do, and we'll talk to you again soon, hopefully celebrating Trump's win after this election, but we'll see. Yeah. Thanks so much, Buck and Clay. Great to have you. Uh, inflation is the number one factor causing the value of the U.S. dollar to go down. And while we've seen a dip in inflation of late, it doesn't mean we won't see it again, even when President Trump is elected this November. The seeds of government way overspending, they're clear for all to see. While there's time, let's make sure some of your savings are inflation sheltered. Investing a portion of your savings in something as sure as gold is a smart tactic. Just look at it historically. 
This is where I trust the good people at Birch Gold Group to help you. Birch Gold can also assist you in converting an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold. And the best news, you don't pay a penny out of pocket. Text my name, Buck, to 989898 and get a free info kit on gold. There's no obligation, just information on fortifying your savings. With an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of happy customers, you can trust Birch Gold to text my name, Buck, to 989898 for your free info kit today.